In this video, we're going to give you a complete guide on how to use Breach. What do each of his abilities do? And more importantly, how should you use them optimally? Let's dive right in. Breach is an agent in the Initiator class, which means his job is to clear out angles and create advantageous fights for his team to take space. He's very different from an agent like Sova though. He doesn't reveal or scout out enemies, but instead makes use of flashes and stuns to make life much more difficult for the enemies. In the right hands, he can be insanely powerful, so here's how to use it. Starting off with Breach's signature ability, the Fault Line. Fault Line is more commonly called Breach's stun and is equipped by using his E key by default. After equipping, holding down your fire button will charge up the ability and increase its length up to 56 meters in front of you. And you can look at the minimap to see exactly which area will be covered by the stun. Simply release Mouse 1 to activate the stun and anyone caught in it will be concussed for 3.5 seconds making them prime targets to pick off. Once the ability is used, there is a 40 second cooldown before it can be used again. So by spacing it out, you can use it multiple times around. Now that we've run down how the fault line works, here's some advice on how to use it. First and foremost, you want to use the minimap to your advantage when using your fault line. If your teammates are fighting a cluster of enemies across the map, it can be incredibly useful to aim a fault line at them on the map to give your team the advantage in their gunfight by stunning the opposing team mid-fight. So keep an eye on the minimap when your team's in trouble, and you can support your boys from a mile away. You'll also want to partner up with any agents on your team with fast movement abilities to follow up on stunned enemies better. Jet's Dash, Raze's Satchels, and Neon's Run are all perfect for teaming up. Just stun any enemies who are a short distance away and have your teammate pounce on them. It's a great way to secure that first kill in a round and make the enemies more cautious and less likely to go for aggressive plays. Finally, the Fault Line is a great tool for clearing out common angles that need to be pushed. The likes of A Main and B Main on Fracture and Ascent are perfect examples of where to use Breach's stun. You can effectively clear out the area and subsequently prevent the enemies from holding the angle in the future. This works particularly well against Operator players who are left utterly hopeless once they get concussed. The next ability is Flash Point, or just Breach's Flash. It's equipped using the Q key by default and sends out a flash with left click that goes through walls up to 10 meters thick. When fully blinded, enemies are denied vision for a full 2 seconds. There's a 1 second windup after you send the flash so particularly fast enemies might be able to turn away, so it's best to be prepared for anything when peeking. There isn't much more to it so let's get into the best ways to use the flash. Similar to the fault line, the flash is best played off of someone who's able to capitalize off it better. Either someone with movement abilities or just someone closer to the corner to peek around it. The reason is that it takes almost a full second to get your gun back up after sending the flash out, meaning that anyone who turned from the blind will be able to take you out before you're ready to fight. So taking advantage of a teammate who already has their gun out nearby is the best way to go about it. The style of play dubbed Flash and Dash is probably one of the clearest examples of how Breach's flashes can look when used optimally. You have a Breach and a Jet working together in tandem, and the result is just perfect harmony. Practically, Jet tells Breach when he's about to dash, and as soon as he does, Breach sends out a flash to instantly capitalize off the space made. If you've ever had the pleasure of playing against a good Jet Breach duo, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But even if you haven't, don't worry, this is totally something you can learn to do yourself if you got a friend to play with. The second piece of advice we have is to try and place your flash at the edges of the opponent's screen, rather than at head height right in front of them. The reason for this is that it will take them longer to notice the flash is hitting them. Something that's far from your crosshair naturally takes longer to identify. What's more is that if they turn to the left and the flash is on the left side of their screen, they might not be able to turn far enough in time to avoid it. Finally, after flashing, you should take an extra moment to swing wider if you're peeking off of it. Most people start spraying the corner they're expecting you to swing out from, so taking the time to go wider from the corner before shooting would definitely be advantageous. Not just that, but on the rare occasion that you might whiff, it'll take longer for the person who's now unflashed to figure out where you are, since they're expecting you right on the corner instead of miles away from it. Before we cover the rest, I want to quickly tell you about our website ProGuides.com. On there, we offer a wide range of tools that you can use to improve faster, like pro courses and even coaching. If you're looking to improve the fastest way you can, check out ProGuide's subscription for just $8 a month. Breach's third ability is the Aftershock, and it is equipped using C by default. The Aftershock sends out three blasts covering a cylindrical area 10 meters long and 6 meters wide. Each blast deals 60 damage for a total of 180 to anyone caught in all three. Similar to Breach's flashes, it needs a wall to go through in order to be used, and it will show up as red on the minimap if it won't work. For example, if it's beyond the maximum deploy distance of 35 meters. Now let's get into some tips on how to use the Aftershock most effectively. The Aftershock works perfectly to drive enemies out of corners and force them to swing you. We often see players trying to use it as a stall, similar to a molly on a main entrance. And while that can work briefly, it's not as effective as saving it for later on the round. So when you know an enemy is in a corner, just throw an aftershock their way and they'll be forced to swing into you. For bonus points, you can combine this with a flash so that they're almost certainly going to die either way. 
The next tip we have is going to really annoy those Sova and Sky players. When you hear a drone or a dog coming, you can send an aftershock through the common corner Sovas and Skies like to use those from. They can't hear the utility coming, and if their team doesn't warn them in time, it's totally a free kill. We already talked about combining the aftershock and the flashpoint to kill enemies who are swinging, but there's another combination that can work just as well, if not better. By stunning the area you're aftershocking first, you can render the opponent mostly immobile, meaning they'll really struggle to get out of the way in time. We find this works best on people who are planting the spike as they'll be forced to get off immediately, meaning you'll either have stopped the plant or getting yet another free kill. Last and definitely not least, we have Breach's ultimate. The ult is called the Rolling Thunder and it costs 8 ultimate points to use. And there's definitely a good reason it's so expensive. Sending it out concusses anyone in a 23 meter wide and 32 meter long area, and it also lifts them off the floor, thereby displacing them. The ult is big enough to fully cover many sites and there's an 8 meter gap in front of Breach where the ultimate won't hit, meaning that you don't have to worry about your teammates who are very close to you being hit by it. The stun effect lasts 6 seconds, which is almost twice as long as the fault line, meaning you'll have plenty of time to take space before the enemies are ready to fight again. With that out of the way, let's get into some tips and tricks. The first tip that we have is to use the ultimate at the right times. Usually, you'll want to be using it to either take or retake a site by sending it once your teammates are all ready to follow it up. But also, don't be afraid to use the ultimate in other vital circumstances too. For example, in a 1v1. When you really think about it, a 1v1 is situationally very similar to a 5v5 in that the odds are even and there's a whole round at stake. If that's what it takes to secure the round, then do it. Remember that the absolute perfect situation rarely arises, so anytime you think you can add significant value to a situation, feel free to let it loose. The next piece of advice is on where exactly to use the ultimate. A lot of the time, people like to send it in right where the space they're trying to take is. After all, that's where they're trying to get into, right? Well, not always. It really helps to pay attention to where exactly the enemies are taking fights from and sending your ultimate towards that space instead. Let's take a push on A-Site on Fracture as an example. Alting the site might be a good idea, but if you've noticed that defenders usually hold the site from areas like under drop and outside CT spawn, you could get a lot more value ulting there and having a site cleared with a stun and an aftershock instead. Your team is able to take the fights from site and no enemy is left unstunned. Just remember that you're trying to ult the players trying to kill you, not just the space you're trying to occupy. So clearing the angles they could kill you from rather than the angles you're going to makes a lot of sense. Finally, keep your ears alert for any sound right after the ultimate clears the space with each of those earth shattering pulses. You'll be able to hear enemies drop back to the ground after being lifted up by the ultimate if you listen very closely, although it can be a bit hard to hear over the sound of the full sight take sometimes. There's been a lot of occasions where we've managed to find exactly which corner the opponents are in just by hearing them drop back to the ground after they've been ulted. A little bit of awareness can go a long way to winning rounds and entire games. Oh, and as a bonus tip, please make sure to clear those close angles that haven't been hit by the ult carefully. People tend to just fly into the site assuming everyone's been ulted, and they forget those 8 meters of space between them and the ultimate, meaning that a lone player could snag multiple kills just with the element of surprise. It's just something to watch out for. And that concludes our ultimate breach guide. If you found this guide helpful, leave us a like and subscribe for more guides just like this one. Let us know which agent you'd want to see next, and we'll see you all in the next one.